So hello and welcome back to the channel and this is second episode of the Redux introduction uh, in which we finally get our hands on Redux because the previous episode was what well, more like introduction, set up, setting up the project, building the basic UI, right? But this is the red meat, this is the core, this is the Redux stuff. So, what do we need to do? Well, Redux itself is working on, based on the idea of the store, meaning that basically most of the stuff that is happening in your app can be represented uh, in a form that can be described by a JSON document. You can imagine that everything that happens in your app can be described uh, by something resembling JSON. Actually, it is more like a tree of objects and arrays living within your app but it can be serialized to JSON. So basically stuff like uh, the list of our products, um, stuff that we are uh, adding to our cart, everything can be extracted and put away into the store. Uh, there's one major remark here. Um, and it is about forms. You see, there's this library called Redux form, which is rather popular, popular right? And uh, often is being used to put the state of your forms, for example, login form, into Redux itself. And I, I was working with that library before, I find it, well, to say the least, correct. Because you see, the state of your forms are really local than global, and there's really no need to share it. So uh, if you're searching for some solution to, to manage the forms, I would rather go with Formic library, but that's like separate object, really, really separate, separate topic, sorry, uh, of discussion. Maybe we'll create some kind of um, series about Formic. But going back to our app, we have to create a store where we'll maintain the card uh, state and our products state. And if you go to the Redux, uh, right, uh, we can see, yeah, here, you can see. Here you can see two things, basically, are at the core concept of Redux. Uh, one concept is that everything that changes the store is being described by an action, and the action has a type, and it does have uh, some kind of payload. And this payload is an additional information, for example, here. Uh, if I'm dispatching an action that has a type of add to do, I also have a payload that is describing that to do that I'd like to uh, add. Also, when I would like to toggle some kind of to do something from my list, I will uh, add an index of that item as a payload. So we're creating plain JavaScript objects that are describing what we're trying to do. And then these actions 
are being put through um, the functions, user functions, that describe how the state is being changed, right? And of course, there are actually there were other uh, rules that you have to play by, like you always have to um, return new state to see an action, and you can see that in um, you can see that in reducer in the React or in changes state of React, right? Uh, for example, in our code uh, here actually trigger the re-render I have to take the previous state and return new state that has a copy of the previous state and an added item okay uh, you will see that this is somehow changed but also not really it's a little bit complicated but we'll go through that so basically to perform some kind of change to our global store, our global object describing the uh, state of our app, I would have to write an action, dispatch it, and then write a reducer function, right? Being a pure function, uh, that would describe the change to the state. And previous versions of uh, Redux, uh, well, for me, I felt that was a little bit too much of a boilerplate code to go through to actually achieve something because you had to write function or function creators, you had to uh, connect your components to the state via map state and map dispatch then you had to write the reducers functions that was too much for me so uh, in our company uh, we decided that there has to be a better way of managing the uh, state the global state that is uh, than writing all of that boilerplate code and we found the library called rematch when everything is described as a model that has a state, the reducers, and the effects. So it is opinionated uh, about how you should do the asynchronous actions. And that worked for us really well. Uh, there are some problems with TypeScript uh, when writing selectors mainly, uh, but we were able to build gigantic application used by millions of users every day uh, with that library but as i mentioned before recently i came back to redux to see that there is actually a better way to handle all of that than writing the function creators writing the uh, register function and uh, now there is much more compact way to handle that. And also they are opinionated now about how to handle asynchronous actions. So that was, well, pretty long introduction. So let's finally get to the code, right? So first thing that we need, create a core for our Redux. Thankfully, this is rather easy now. What we need is uh, to take from Redux toolkit function configure store. Uh, and then we just create it. For now, it will be empty. There's a reducer, it's going to be empty object for now. And we will expert default store okay so for now it is empty we don't have any reducers here so um we will split the reducers via domain and as you can see you can start to think of reducers now as a models that 
um, that put together some kind of encapsulated logic for a part of your app, for your part of your application. For us, that will be the card reducer because one part of our application is a card, and there will be a products reducer because that's the second part. One thing we have to do actually is to combine the Redux part, meaning the store, with our React app. So in app TSX, we need to inform our app that we are using Redux. And this is rather easy because we need a pro diver, provider from React Redux. And as I mentioned before, uh, this is working based on context, but this is far too complex to explain in this introduction series. Maybe we'll do that later. And we just import store from here and we import provider from here. Okay, this works pretty good. And actually what that allows us to do is to go to inspect and go to Redux. Okay, so these are Redux DevTools. Uh, if you just type it into Google, you will find it no problem. And nowadays the integration with that uh, is actually pretty easy. You don't have to add anything into your code. Uh, Redux Toolkit does that for you. And we can find first action displayed here being init action and this is the initial state initialization of our star so we have redux now linked to our react app that's one good thing well uh, we need to actually create uh, our move our product state from local state to the redux Right. So this is the first time we'll actually write a so-called slice or model, if you'd like to name it that way, but in the documentation then create a, uh, name it a slice. So the idea here again is to look at your application from the perspective of different parts, different domains, and slice this whole great uh, global state into parts, into slices as a pie. And then you can reassemble it at the store level, okay? So I will create a file that will maintain our product states and I will create, I will name it productslice.ts. Okay, and what we need here is create slice from uh, Redux toolkit, right? I think. Oh, uh, I'll move some stuff from here to here, and this is our interface. Be really precise about that, and call this product array. Uh, Good. And now we have to create our slice, and this is very easy. And as you will see here, good thing is Redux Toolkit to create slice function is very good when it comes to inferring the types from TypeScript, meaning there will be really just a little bit of types that we have to write on our own. Everything else is being inferred really well by, by uh, Redux itself, Redux library itself. So let's create a, uh, let's say that this is a product slice and uh, we create a slice. We name it products. I think this is mainly um, the name property is mainly for the Redux DevTools actually because it's not being really used anywhere else. Uh, there, 
we can pass initial state for us it's going to be let's rename it initial state and now this is renamed okay and now we're writing reducers that we need and first reducer that we need is going to be app product uh so this is gonna be by um our form to add another product to to the state and this is a state as first argument and second argument is gonna be an action and this action will have a payload i'm gonna say that this should be a, a payload action and it can be taken here with a payload of product and uh, here should uh, return new state so uh, since i know that the initial state is an array uh, i'm going to return action payload which is a product and then the rest of the state and this is looking almost good now it's really perfect so we need to export a few stuffs here uh, for start let's export default product slice reducer right so that creates the um, reducer function for us that we can use in our store second thing that i'd like to export is um at products and this is going to live in our product slice actions that looks good uh, now we have to plug that reducer into our store so let's import product from Uh, products product slice to that okay now well our code isn't really uh compiling right now but can we can fix that real quick with that um and fix that well that one thing Yeah, it won't work because of the, because of that problem. So we have to find a way to get products from the reducer into into uh, our products list, and there are many approaches. One thing to do is to uh, connect to state via map state function this is totally doable right but um, from my experience uh, i know that you can use uh, selectors uh, which are simple functions to take something from the state and return it and then use a use selector hook to get uh, get the data into your component. So how would you do that? Of course, the map set is also good viable approach. Uh, but about the the products, I can write a simple function. Get products, right? Doesn't take any arguments. Well, actually, it does just state root state we'll talk about it just in a second uh, and it does reduce return state products products okay so the state here the root state is the global state meaning everything you have stored in the redux so far right then 
uh, products is the name of the reducers and uh, well yeah that's gonna be it state products because here we're storing that array as a state state products will point to the state of those initial products but what is a root state so if you go to store we have to add a little bit of um of type script magic to get that actually we need to export a type of state root state which is a return type is generic type of store get state so basically uh, you ask for the type of the get state right which is products array pro array, which is array of product and then you move this uh, through the return type operator to get the return type of a function type because get state is a function okay and with that we are uh, we have our get products selector right i can even completely sure that it is a selector do that and then in our uh, products list i would say that products are effect of running use selector hook uh, and here we have to here we have to provide our selector, selector function which is get uh, get draw select selector of course we don't have Now, as you can see, we have our wonderful products, but they're being taken from Redux instead of our local state. So if you take a look here, these are coming from, um, from the products reducer, and you can also display this as a chart. So this is our state, as I mentioned before, it has a tree structure and you will see trees as a structures all over the, the programming world. It has one reducer that has a, a set of products and then you have the array of products, product zero, one, two. Also, as I mentioned before, you can imagine all of your state in Redux as a JSON document, because if you go to the row, Tab of um, state in the Redux DevTools, you will see that this is serialized. This is actually a very powerful concept if you think about it, because you can download your state or upload a state into your application, uh, which can be helpful, for example, when you're coding a project with your friends or with your colleagues at work and someone has a bag and you can reproduce it with your own state you can just ask them to send that ask them to send to you a json file representing their state when the bag occurred and upload it to your own application so i believe that introduction to redux is long enough for now next episode will extend it actually connect our form to Redux uh, and then build a card uh, slice or model. And the fourth episode probably will be about handling the asynchronous actions. So thank you for that. As always, like, subscribe, comment, tell me if have you already have any experience with Redux and how do you find this new version with less boilerplate so that's it i will see you in the next one goodbye